what's up, my name is Samuel Leeds. I'm a property investor and I've bought hundreds of houses. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you the exact process of actually buying a house. What happens? Start to finish. So step one, when you're buying a house, is you're going to need to start by having a goal in mind and knowing what are you buying a house for. So this is actually really important. I know having a goal might sound really basic and motivational. It's not. Every solicitor, agent, broker, they're going to ask you these questions. They're going to say, number one, are you buying it as a residential or buy to let? And you need to know the difference. Residential means you're buying it to live in the house yourself. Buy to let means you're buying it to rent it out. So you need to know which one you're doing. And it's important that you don't mix this up. The process is the same. You also need to know how you're going to be financing this property. Is this going to be cash or mortgage? Will everybody say to you? And you'll need to know how you're going to finance it. Are you going to be buying this cash? Or are you going to be buying it mortgage? So that's the first thing to just understand about what are you buying this for? What's the goal? How are you going to be financing it? Step two, get a solicitor. Now, you might wonder, at what point shall I find a solicitor? Do I have to wait until I've already found a house? Do I have, no, it's step two, okay? Step two is find a solicitor, a conveyancing solicitor, namely a solicitor that deals with property transactions and ask them, hey, I'm looking at buying a house. Can I put your name down as my solicitor? Now, this could be a recommended solicitor. This could be somebody that you know from your network. It could be someone you found from Google, but you need a solicitor. Now, you can change solicitor at any time. So if the solicitor does your head in and you decide, actually, I don't want to use them, you can change the solicitor. But step two is you need a solicitor in place before you start doing anything. Step three, mortgage broker. Do not try and get a mortgage from your bank. Because if you go to your bank and you say, oh, can I get a mortgage, please? They might decline you at worst or at best. They will offer you the mortgage that they can offer you. You want to go to an independent mortgage broker. This is step three. And the independent mortgage broker will look at all the lenders, all the banks, and they will give you the best lender the best mortgage for you and for the house that you are buying. Now, you might think it's too early to be speaking to mortgage brokers. It's not. If you're planning on buying a house, step one is have a goal and know what kind of house you're going to be buying, because that's what the solicitor and mortgage broker are going to ask. But step, step two is get a solicitor. Step three, speak to a broker and say, I'm thinking of buying a house. Could I get a mortgage? Can we have a conversation? And then what they'll do is they'll check your credit They'll have an initial consultation. They shouldn't charge you any money for this. Neither should the solicitor. You're not paying. You're just lining up your team so that when you start viewing houses, you've got this ready in place. Step four, funds. No mortgage broker, no bank will lend you 100% of the money to go and buy a house. So if you're buying a house, if it's a residential house, you can borrow up to 95% as a mortgage. That's max. That's for first time buyers. If it's a buy to let, you can borrow typically 75% of the purchase price on the house. That leaves you with a shortfall, right? So you're gonna have to, the little, the little bit that you're gonna have to top up, what's that called? That's called a deposit. So you're gonna have to, step four, know where your actual deposit is gonna come from. Is it gonna come from, if it's a gift from a family member, that's okay. Because brokers are happy, lenders are happy for, for you to top the difference up, the deposit, from a gift. If it's a loan from a bank, uh, 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 they're going to be uncomfortable because they're going to say, you, you're, you've got no skin in the game. So you need to speak to your mortgage broker and you need to work out where's this money coming from. The first question a broker is going to ask you is they're going to say, how much money have you got right now? What's your deposit going to be? And then they can find you the difference in form of a mortgage. Step five, you're going to have to actually find a house, right? And it might be that you don't even start looking for houses probably you shouldn't, until you've done step one, step two, step three, and step four. If, you've, if you're viewing houses and the estate agents are saying to you, so where's your deposit coming from? Who's your mortgage broker? Have you got a sister lined up and you go, no, I'm just viewing a house for fun. That's okay, there's no problem. But 
the estate agent will not take you as serious. And if you're serious about buying a house, really, you wanna do these steps in the order that I'm saying, it's gonna really help you out. So five is actually find a house. How do you find a house? Well, I do a lot of training programs and help a lot of people on how to find the best houses in the right areas for the right price and how to negotiate. But this video is about the big picture of buying a house. So maybe you could find houses on right move. Maybe you could go into an estate agent and just say, this is what I'm looking for. When you speak to estate agents, what they're gonna to wanna to know is they're gonna to wanna to get your details. If you ring an estate agent now and say, I'm looking to buy a house, they'll say, no problem, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? What's your email? What are you looking for? We'll put you on our list. That is what an estate agent will say when you phone them up. Let them ring estate agents and tell them, yeah man, put me on your list and then tell them exactly what you are looking for before step six. Step six is the viewing. No estate agent in the country will let you put an offer on a house or buy a house unless first you have viewed the house. Or there are some, the whole, there's exceptions to everything. Okay, you can pay someone to view the house for you, you can get a deal sourcer, but generally speaking, you have to and should view the house before buying it or putting an offer on it. So step six is you're gonna go around, you're gonna look at the house, you're gonna do your research, you're gonna see if it ticks all the boxes for your investment or residential purposes. That is step six. Step seven is putting an offer forward on the house. Now, sometimes people really wonder, you know, how do you put forward an offer? Do you have to write a letter? Do you have to send an email? How does it work? And how do you know how much to put forward? Let me explain real simple. Putting an offer forward on the house literally goes like this. Hey, I'd like to put an offer on the house. Like you just ring up and you tell them what you're wanting to offer. Now again, I run hours of training on how to negotiate the best prices and how to get a really good offer. But what I'll say right now is never offer full asking price. You're gonna wanna get a discount. So put forward your offer and the estate agent will um, do a bit of backing and forwarding with you. So they'll say, oh, let me put it to the seller. They will be the in-between. Never try and go direct to the seller because the agent will hate you for it and the estate agent needs to be your best friend. So you're gonna let the estate agent do all the negotiations, you're gonna tell them what you wanna offer and then hopefully you will soon hear the good news of congratulations, your offer has been accepted, which brings you to the next step getting the memorandum of sale. What does this mean? The memorandum of sale is a document, a one page document that the estate agent will give you, which is when your offer has been fully accepted, it's agreed, you've got a little piece of paper that says congrats and it's all going ahead. Now, you're not gonna be able to get this document by simply the seller saying offer accepted. Once your offer's been accepted, in order to get this piece of paper from the agent, you're gonna to need to provide some proof of who the heck you are. They're not gonna give you a memorandum of sale to some stranger. They're gonna to wanna to know, they're gonna to wanna to see some form of identification. They're gonna want a correspondence address. They're gonna want your solicitor details. At this point, you've paid zero money to your solicitor. You've found a solicitor, you've earmarked a solicitor, and you've given the details of the solicitor over to the estate agent in order to get your memorandum of understanding. You're gonna provide your mortgage broker's details. They're gonna want something called a mortgage dip. A dip means a decision in principle. So as soon as your offer's been accepted, you're gonna to have to go back to your broker and you're gonna to say to your mortgage broker, Great news, this is the exact property. This is, now they're gonna to wanna to see a decision in principle. The mortgage broker in question might take a few days to get this decision in principle. So they may give you the uh, memorandum of sale without a dip, but just with confirmation from the mortgage broker that you're good. But they're gonna want your mortgage broker's details. And lastly, number five, is they're gonna to wanna to see, of course, your proof of funds. Those are the five things that they're gonna to need to see from you before issuing you with that beautiful memorandum of sale which leads you on to step eight, the sales progression. The sales progression typically takes about three months. You might think, why don't houses just complete quickly? I wanna buy it, the seller wants to sell it, I've got the money, what's the hold up? Well, there is a hold up and that is namely solicitors having to do things called searches. 
What are searches? Searches are the solicitor dealing and liaising with the seller's solicitor because to buy a house, you need a solicitor by law and the seller needs a solicitor by law. So your solicitor and the seller's solicitor are gonna have a bit of a thrashing out job where they're gonna go over every single little detail of the house down to the water, the drainage, um, who owns what legally, who owns this fence compared to that fence. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that the solicitors are gonna need to thrash out. They're also gonna need to do things like check the title deeds, make sure the property has not got any mine shafts under it, make sure that the person who says they're selling the property actually owns the title deeds. This can take time because solicitors tend to be pretty slow. Meanwhile, while the solicitor is going through all these searches, you are using your mortgage broker to actually get the money for the purchase. So your mortgage broker is gonna be relentlessly working to find the best mortgage for you, get you an official mortgage offer, and this will be running alongside the solicitor doing the searches. This is all called the sales progression. The most valuable piece of advice I can give you is during the sales progression, you want everybody to be working together. Communication is key. Your mortgage broker, your solicitor, and the estate agent should all be in communication and should be talking. And you, as the actual buyer of the property, should do two things. Number one, when the ball is in your court, what do I mean by that? I mean, if they've given you something to sign, if the solicitor said that they need to jump on a quick call with you to check that it's really you and they need to see you face to face on FaceTime for 30 seconds, don't delay it. Get the ball out of your court, court as quick as you can, otherwise you're gonna hold things up and you're gonna frustrate the seller. However, when the ball is not in your court, yes, you can chase your team a little bit, but you need to be patient because it does take time. And if you're on the phone every day to your solicitor chasing them, chasing them, chasing them, you're probably gonna be a nightmare client and they might not want to do business with you again. So when the ball's in your court, knock it out. And when it's not in your court, be patient. The solicitor and the mortgage broker, if you're in communication with everybody, they will guide you through the sales progression and tell you exactly what you need to do in order to complete safely, ethically, and legally. Get an independent building survey on your property. This is not a legal requirement, but it is something that I would highly recommend. And what this means is, you're gonna get a building survey on the property. They're gonna check the property with a fine tooth comb. They're gonna check the roof. They're gonna check the, um, the structural aspect of the property. Make sure that the property is in good condition. Now you may say, I don't need to get a survey because my mortgage company are coming out to survey the property anyway. Yes, they will. Before they give you money for the property, they will come and look at the property. But they'll spend 15 minutes in the house just checking that it looks okay. You may say, my solicitors are gonna do searches and they're gonna make sure the property's okay and it's freehold and it's in good standing. Yes, they are, because that's their legal, that's their legal responsibility. But you need to get an independent building survey that will come in, they'll spend a few hours in the property, it's not a legal requirement, but you do not wanna buy a house if there's a problem that has been missed by the mortgage lender or the solicitors. It costs about 350 pounds, and if you speak to your mortgage broker and you tell them you want a survey, the mortgage broker will probably be able to recommend a surveyor to you, but just get an independent building survey, and what, what that means is if there's a real issue, the independent building surveyor will be liable. They are responsible for making sure that they tell you that the property is in good standing. It's one of the most best 400 pounds you can ever spend. Exchange and completion. So you're gonna exchange contracts, and then you're gonna complete contracts. The difference between exchanging and completing contracts just means when you exchange contracts, that's when you've both signed and the contracts are exchanged. Completion is when you actually get the solicitor, register the title deeds, you pay, and you don't need to actually pay for the property until you complete. So during those three or four months of sales progression, that's, you're not gonna to need to pay for anything apart from the fees of the professionals. So that is the 10 steps to buying a house. I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my property investment videos and also hit like, see you soon.